Income tax 2021-2022 business expenses pension plans. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lesser tax software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the Schedule C business flowing into line A to the page 1 of 1040. Let's follow that flow through by going to the Schedule C. Schedule C, which is, of course, the profit or loss from business, basically an income statement, 100 120,000 gross. We got the 20,000 expenses to start off with, the 100,000 on the net, then rolling in to the Schedule 1. Schedule 1, which is the additional income and adjustments to uh, income. Line number 3, line number 3, totaling up down below. Line number 10, then rolling in to page 1 of the Form 1040. And now that's on the 100000 We also have to deal with the self-employment tax. You'll recall self-employment tax is on the Schedule SE, Schedule SSE, self-employment tax, Social Security and Medicare, starting at the 14129 that's rolling into the Form 1040. You could also see it on page two here. There's the 14129 that rolls in then to the 1040 page number two. There's the 14,000. It's not the federal income tax, but the Social Security and Medicare, the uh, employment tax. Then we also have half of that that's deductible above the line. And we could see that on the Schedule SE calculation, the half taken at the 7065 flowing into Schedule 1. And page number 2 of Schedule 1, number 15, that then is flowing in to the first page of the Form 1040, line number 10. So we got the 100,000 minus the 7,065, adjusted gross income, 92,935. We got the 12,550 on the standard deduction. We also have the qualified business income deduction Form 8995. I'm letting the software do that calculation at this point in time. Taxable income at the 64,308, 64,308. We can mirror that in our Excel worksheet where we have the 100,000 pulling in from the Schedule C. Schedule C, 120 minus the 20 gives us the 100. That pulls into the Form 1040 or the first page of the formula. We then have the tax that's calculated on it, the added tax. That's the self-employment tax, which is over here on the additional tax. We got our calculation for it coming out to that 14,130. The 14,130 then pulling in here. Half of that is the above the line deduction adjustments to income. In other words, pulling into this schedule or coming from this schedule. That's not the one, this schedule. There it is, 7,065. That pulls into our formula. There that is. There's the 92,935 matching then what we have on our tax return, 12550 for the standard deduction that we have here as well. We're pulling in the qualified business income deduction from the return to get to the 64308, 64308, page 2, doing the federal income tax calculation for us for the progressive tax system, 9900, 9900 there, and then the 14130 to get to the 24130. There's the 24, uh, I'm sorry, the 24.30 or the 24.29, which is a dollar off due to rounding. Let's get rid of this 150. That's not part of our starting point. That's not, that's not part of our thing here. That's an old problem stuff. So let's go back on over. That's our starting point. Now, if I go back on over, let's say we had some kind of retirement plan that we set up. We can go into the Schedule C and we can see then on the Schedule C that we have line number 19 here, pension and profit sharing plans. So that would be the most straightforward kind of uh, data input. So if we had a SEP or a simple or a qualified plans, then we can typically take the deduction here. You can deduct contributions you make to the plan for your employees on line 19 of the schedule. So if I jump in over there, then we're going to say contributions made, let's just say uh, 10,000 on the contributions and then jump back on over and there is that so that's fairly straightforward now but however we might set this up and say if you if you're a sole proprietorship as we are here and you deduct contributions you make to the plan for yourself that goes on line 16 of schedule one 
So th that means that, and that's part of the reason that, of course, many people are going to set up, say, a simple or a SEP. They're basically saying, hey, if I was an, an employee working for a business, I would have access to generally a 401k plan if it was a large company, because that's a big benefit that they often offer. And I would get to put more money in to that plan and possibly have a matching thing and everything with it. If I'm a sole proprietorship, then if I don't have anything set up, I only have the IRA to contribute into. And the problem with the IRA or one problem is that it has a limited amount. I want to put more money in than the IRA will let me put in. Usually the contribution limits are much higher for some kind of plan. I don't want to set up a 401k plan possibly for my business because it's too complex to set up. The administration work is too complex. So possibly I set up a SEP or a simple, mainly primarily might be your first thought for small business so that I can put more money in to it and so then you make your decision on the step and the simple possibly for that and so that i could possibly give benefits to the employees as well so they can have more that they can put in than possibly under just an ira and then we can choose which plan like a sep or a simple would be best for us and then try to figure out how much we're going to be able to put money into into the plan so we might then once we figure that out which which you want to then think about how you're going to set up the plan when do I have to put in the contributions? Some plans like a SEP possibly you might have time even after the year end, which gives you a little bit more time to do tax planning and put the contribution in. So when do you have to put the contribution in? And then how do you actually do it logistically? Well, then we could finally get to this component. You could go to the schedule one, page number two, and we're looking for the contributions to the plan, which is 19, no, which is going to be line 16 so 16 so whatever our contribution is we can then put that component here and i'm going to go to let's say it was a I'm, I'm going with a step here now you can you can then use the software to kind of figure out how much you can put in and this is what's kind of nice like if you could set up your plan so that you can then determine how much you made because that's often going to be one of the limits in terms of calculating how much you can put into the plan then kind of like with an ira you would have the capacity to, to do that last minute planning to see how much you could put in so if i was to say in software say i want to max out the plan by putting a one here then it'll basically put the maximum amount of the deductible amount here which you could see is much higher than the the ira and that's going to be again one of the big points for small businesses oftentimes to get themselves access to higher contributions as well as benefiting uh, any employees as well so then if we add that up that's going to add up to the 2386 we're going to pull that over to the first page of the form 1040 so now we've got the 90,000, the 2386 here to get us to the gross uh, income of the 66 a 914 the 66 914 if we were to mirror that on our software over here we could say okay the contribution we made to the to the schedule c fairly straightforward we put whatever else the contribution was and that was ten thousand and that's going to adjust our schedule c income to the ninety thousand pulling over here and then our contribution that we made to our portion of the plan is an adjustment to income which we could say we got student loans, we got all this stuff. Let's add another, insert another, and we put in, what did we call it here? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? It's called self-employment, self-employed, SEP, simple. Let's call it that. Self-employed. Oh, I have that somewhere. It's already up there. Self-employed, self-employed, SEP, and simple is already there somewhere so and i've said that we put that in at the 16 728 16728 16728 roger that copy out going on to page one again of the form 1040 i mean so now we've got the 66 914 for the a to the g to the i adjusted gross income otherwise 66914 and so that looks good and then we've got the new business credit 10873 10873 i'm going to put here 10873 to get to the 43491 43491 43491 page two calculating the tax then 
at the 5313, 5313. We're going to say this is 5313. And our calculation of the self-employment, is that calculating properly? It is. Roger that. Roger out. 10, 1829, 1829, 1830 off by a dollar. That is okay. That is okay. So that's going to be the general ID. Now, you might, if when you first kind of set this thing up, you could have that qualified credit as well. And that credit is on form 8881, I believe. So you can look at the instructions for more detail on this. But it's a credit for small employer pension plan startup costs and auto enrollment. You may, you may also be able to claim a tax credit if you begin a new qualified defined benefit or defined contribution plan, including a 401k, a simple plan, or a SEP. The cost equals 50% of the cost to set up the administer the plan and educate employees about the plan up to a maximum of $500 per year for each of the first three years of the plan. So qualified startup costs, we'd have to determine the startup costs. And if I just basically put up the startup costs that were like a thousand, let's say or 10,000, that's kind of a lot for startup costs. Let's put a thousand in there. See what that, see what we get. It's going to cap it at the 500. So there is the 500 that is pulling over to then form 3800. So that's pulling over to form 380 general business credit. So the general business credit then and we've got the 500 that is pulling over then to the form 1040 and we're going to go to page number two and now we've got that $500 ultimately pulling in here from schedule number three. I should have gone to schedule number three. So there's schedule number three for the general business credit that's pulling into the form 1040 page number two. Remember it's a credit not a deduction so you get kind of the more of a benefit the full $500 being affected as opposed to a decrease in the income on that. So if you're setting up the, the plan, then you could take into consideration that as well. And you, and you could take a look at more research on it by going into the instructions for form 8881 on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.g to the O to the V, G-O-V.